He's bigger than your problem. He's much bigger than your difficulties. Much bigger. One simple word and everything is changed. That prayer is heard and answered. Keep praying, keep praying, keep praying. There's a reason for all this tonight. There's a reason for it. everything inside of you that your situation whatever it is it's over it's done granted request he has granted your request Lift your hands and thank him. It's done. He's bigger than your problem. He's much bigger than your difficulties. Much bigger. One simple word and everything is changed. That prayer is heard and answered say amen amen amen, amen. 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 thank you thank you i want you to listen to me tonight hear me out i have been in the ministry 43 years now as of just days ago december 7th back in 74 I began preaching. That's a long time. I have seen God answer prayer for me over and over and over and over and over. And I'm here to tell you, we often ask little when God wants to give us much. And we limit him with our faith. That's why he said, oh, you have little faith. Because we're not able yet to see how big God is. It takes time. Of course it does. But the hour has come. We need to take off the limits. Our God is a big God. 
I want you to say, my God is a big God. That's why I said to you earlier, nothing is impossible. I really don't care what sickness is in your body and what problem is in your life and how big it may look. The God you serve is able to do exceeding abundantly above all you ask or can even think about. So you got to take off the limits. Just start believing now, today, this second, that whatever this thing in front of you is that says impossible is smashed in pieces. I don't care what the doctors have said. They're only people. That man, just because he wears something white, means nothing. He's still a man. Or that doctor lady who comes in and she got some what? She's only a lady. We're talking about God here. God will cancel that doctor's report. He's going to cancel that doctor's who said to you, you're going to, whatever, you've got cancer and there's no hope. Oh, yes, there is hope. I've seen too much to start doubting. Nothing. 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 It's impossible with God. Now, the problem with us is we're just not willing to wait for his time. We want it our time, our way, now. God says, no, I will do it my way when I am ready. But why does he wait? He waits to really hear this. He waits because most times you are too... Forgive me if I say it like this blunt. You're too wrapped up in yourself. And he cannot get through to you. He has to wait till you are completely empty of self. We get so wrapped up. God cannot get through that because we, be, we begin to beg. Oh, please heal me. And, and we, we almost, uh, you know, lose it. We can't even breathe. We, we're, we're like this. So uptight. Relax. God cannot heal you when you're all wrapped up in yourself. I used to watch people in those crusades of ours. Their face would be just locked in. Begging. Nothing would happen to them. Because God cannot get through that. Yet the one who was just completely relaxed and began to forget that they are sitting on a wheelchair and they start to pray for somebody else. At that moment, they're healed. Because God cannot heal you when you're focused on your trouble. He can't. He, he waits till you just let go of, your, of that mm, uptightness. Call it whatever you want. I remember that poor fella. Lakeland, Florida. I was preaching at a big school. And he was just begging God. That poor fella. I felt so sorry for him. Please. He was almost screaming at the Lord. Wanted God to fill him with the Holy Spirit. He thought, first of all, that God was deaf. He was screaming at him. He was so uptight and so wrapped up in himself. I felt so sorry for the poor guy. I had to say, relax, brother. Just calm down. He couldn't calm down because he thought by his begging, he's going to touch God's heart. No, no, no. Faith. Relax. Anyone who struggles will drown. You go swimming, you just relax. 
God is not impressed with all that nonsense, begging, screaming at him, getting all uptight and wrapped up in your own trouble. It's just not going to happen. Trust in the Lord. Faith does not struggle. And all God wants you to do is just ask him and trust him. I know this is simple stuff. It's too simple, I know. That's why some people just don't want to listen. Oh, that's just too simple. It is. Let's not leave the simplicity of Christ. Let's not walk away from the simplicity that's in Jesus. You see these poor people, you know, these, these priests living in some desert monastery that punish themselves with fasting and doing all kinds of things, thinking they're going to impress God. No. Jesus did not say on the cross to be continued by you. He said, it is finished. There's nothing you can do. There's nothing you can pay. Just relax and accept his loving gift. You know, when people, you know, they, 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 they want to impress God. They, they think they need to punish themselves. That God will pay attention to their whatever. I knew a man related to, uh, to someone in my family. He was the father of my aunt. My aunt's dad was religious. Oh, dear God, he was religious. And the worst people in the world are religious. They use their religion. They, they think they can impress God with their actions and religions. That poor fellow wanted something from God. So he went to church on his knees three miles away and for three miles he was on his knees going to church on very rough roads in Jaffa Israel we we don't have grass not a whole lot of grass in Jaffa <laughs> if you go from here to there you'll be bleeding by the time you get over there because the it's very rough you know so he's on his knees and he's going all the way to church on his knees by the time he got to church he was Bleeding everywhere. The blood all over the place. And he gets inside the church and makes a request. Demanding God would show up. He's, because he felt he bled for him. So God has to show up because he bled for him. He forgot that the blood of Jesus is plenty. And so now, and so now, when he gets to church and God doesn't show up visibly to him because he said I want to see you visibly because I paid the price and I came from my home on my knees since nothing happened and nothing would ever happen with anything like this because that's mockery you know God never asked you and I to punish ourselves he stood up and said there's no God for the rest of his life he was an atheist and died an atheist because he thought he could win God's favor by bleeding for him or by punishing himself foolishness you know a lot of people do that they punish themselves they, they, they want to impress God they think God is moved by whatever they do for him I knew people dear Lord they would fast for days and days and days Thinking God's going to heal them because they fasted. And I know fasting is in the Bible. But you can't pay for miracles. Not even with something like a fast. What does the Bible say? Wash your face and anoint yourself and don't let nobody know you're fasting. But those poor people would starve their body. Trying to twist God's arm to heal them. It's not going to happen. Like a child, you have to come. Trust him. Just trust him. Look, 
I have seen probably more sick people in my lifetime than most people alive. I've seen more miracles than most people alive. And I can tell you, nobody's going to get healed when they beg God for it. Or try to pay him for it. Even pay him with something they want to do for him. No, never. You can't buy God's favor. You cannot buy his mercy. All he's looking for is faith. Simple, precious, childlike faith. It's like it's like this dear lady I knew who was healed so beautifully. Rita Lacour, I've told the story around the world. Rita Lacour was a French Canadian living up in northern Quebec. Never heard the name Jesus mentioned one time in church. Catholic. Never mentioned. The name Jesus was never, never mentioned by the priest in that church. But she had multiple sclerosis on a wheelchair for many years with little children. She heard miracles were happening in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania through the ministry of a lady named Catherine Kuman that she never heard of. There was a lady named Mrs. Champagne. I'll never forget Mrs. Champagne. She, she was, she, her face was red, 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 red like tomato red. And I knew Mrs. Champagne because she'd come to my meetings. And Mrs. Champagne told Rita LaCour that Jesus was healing people in Pittsburgh. And Rita decided to go down, drive a long way from northern Quebec. That's a long drive, long drive. So now she tells her husband, Jacques, to take her down to Pittsburgh. Because miracles are happening in Pittsburgh. And she had not walked in years. Living on a wheelchair. Having to take care of her own husband and children. Never. Never heard the name Jesus mentioned one time. Her husband said no. He would not take her. She begged and kept asking. And finally he gave up and said alright I'll take you down. On the way down, now that's a long drive from northern Quebec down to Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. It's at least three days drive. So they get to the church. First Presbyterian church, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, right downtown. And the place is packed. They can't get in. Rita Lacour is outside on the wheelchair crying. Because they drove all that way and didn't get in. Had to stay in hotel here and hotel there. And when they get there, no space. Happened to be, an usher happened to be outside. And he saw Rita. He said, you come in and you take my seat. So he gave her his seat way in the back. And Rita told me this story many, many times. In fact, she was with me on This Is Your Day years ago. She said, I sat there. And I looked at that lady I'd never seen before in my life. She was so dramatic, she said. It turned me off. Because Catherine spoke, Jesus. She would keep going with, Holy Spirit. First time I heard her, Hello there, she said. Have you been waiting for me? I thought, dear God, what is this? <laughs> but when I saw her, I forgot all about the hello there because she was so anointed, you know. So now Rita is sitting in the back and Catherine is ministering to the sick. And Rita thinks, oh, there's no way she's probably paying her money to come up and say they're healed. But an hour later, she thought, there's no way they can all come up and lie, saying, I'm healed. Now, the end of the service. And poor Rita is still on the wheelchair. Hey, Tim, tell Randy it's still hot in here. Get that air going. 
Well, anyways, now she's in the back. Service is almost over. Miss Kuman was closing the service. And Rita, so cute, she told me one day, she said, Pastor Ben, I looked up. And the first time I heard it, I couldn't believe that she actually said that to the Lord. She looked up, she said, Jesus, I have never spoken to you before. <laughs> I don't know you, but I know your mother. <laughs> she had a Catholic lady. Her priest never mentioned Jesus, but he mentioned Mary all the time. So, <laughs> Jesus, I've never spoken to you before. I don't know you, but I know your mother. Wow. And then she said, if that woman up there is speaking truth, heal me too. And she's sitting on that wheelchair when she felt heat go through her body. And she looks at her husband, Jacques, she says, something has happened to me. He said, don't embarrass me. <laughs> don't do anything. Jacques, she said, I feel something has happened to me. Oh, please, he said, Rita, don't, don't, don't make a scene out of it. And he would not even listen to her. Finally, she said, there's only one way to find out. And she got up and was never back in that wheelchair ever again. God not only healed her, he gave her a healing ministry among the Catholics. She began praying for the sick herself. Simple prayer. Lord, I don't know you. I know your mother. Jesus most certainly smiled and said, Let's heal this one. <laughs> Simple, like a child. That's all I'm talking about. Simple trust. Stop begging. Now, Jeremiah 33, 3 says, Call unto me, and I will answer thee, and show thee great and mighty things that you don't know. Just call. That's all. You don't have to whip yourself like they do in Iran. You don't have to punish your body and pray so many times a day. You, you don't have to fast every week. Just call. You pick up that phone and say, Jesus, I'm calling for you. Simple, really. Lord... I'm calling on you. Call unto me. How simple that is. I'm not asking you to go pay anything. Don't beg, just call. You see those people in many parts of the world punishing themselves, bleeding so God would pay attention to them, whipping their backs till the blood flows. Having to go here and go there and do this and do that. How many of them, you see other religions, they have to do all bunch, a bunch of things. So they, so, and there's no salvation promised. There's no healing promised. They just do, 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 do. Jesus didn't say do, do, do. He said it's done. All you have to do is enjoy the done Work of Calvary. That's the simplest thing and the hardest thing for most people. Because they just, it, they, they don't get it. It doesn't compute. How simple is it to just wait? Just wait. Did you take care of that airbag there? You go take care of that thing, Tim. You tell Randy. Full blast, I don't believe it for a minute. <laughs> Those people are fanning themselves out here. Make sure that thing is working. Say amen. amen. But let's focus on the Lord now. Forget the air conditioning. Be glad it's not summertime. 
Now you hear me because I want God to touch your life. You make a decision now that 2018 will be your year of miracles. No, no, you make that decision now. I want you all to say 2018 is my year of miracles. And it's going to happen when you do what I'm telling you tonight. You're going to call upon the Lord and wait till he answers. Don't rush him. Never late. He's never early, but he's never late. But that's just the way he is. And why is he not early? So the flesh would die. He keeps you waiting so the flesh would get out of the way. The righteous cry, Psalm 34, 17. The righteous cry and the Lord heareth and delivereth them out of all their troubles. That's his promise, people. All you have to do is call. The righteous have to cry. And the cry, that word cry doesn't mean like weep. Cry means calling upon the Lord. That Hebrew word means to call. And he will hear and deliver you out of all, all your sickness, all your pain, all your troubles, every one of them. That child will serve the Lord. That son will be delivered from drugs. That husband will be set free from alcohol. Your children will serve the Lord. Guaranteed. Lift your hands, say guaranteed. Guaranteed. 